Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am making a video about a topic that I have never made a video about before, and that is the Institute from Fallout 4. Now I wouldn't normally make a video like this, but I've gotten inspiration because I feel that there's a lack of people discussing how the Institute built itself. So I'm going to go through that and give you a list of information that I've compiled in this video. So to start, let's talk about the Commonwealth Institute of Technology. The Institute built itself from the ruins of the former CIT, as I'm sure many of you know. In 2110, approximately 33 years after the bombs dropped in the Fallout Universe timeline, the survivors and their descendants founded the Institute with the goal of furthering advancements made in pre-war science. It was a new era for the remnants of one of pre-war America's most renowned universities, Mankind Redefined. Originally, members of the Institute lived and worked in the bowels of CIT, which extended far beneath the ruins we see on the surface. We catch a glimpse of the ruins when exploring the old robotics division near the section of the Institute that houses their molecular relay, and when exploring an old water tunnel system underneath the area near CIT when siding with the Minutemen during the nuclear option. The subterranean living space sheltered most of the scientists from the worst of the radiation when the bombs fell, but all were still exposed to the lingering fallout of the Great War. Slowly, over nearly two centuries, the descendants of the original survivors expanded from the basement of CIT, digging out larger, more cavernous facilities. We can hypothesize that the Institute received a great deal of construction equipment and material from sending their Generation 1 and 2 synths to scavenge the ruins of CIT and the Commonwealth itself. We know that Institute scientists originally ventured outside the complex, but by 2180, the Institute completed the development of its molecular relay. To prevent any further contamination of DNA, and to prevent any of its personnel from being hurt on the surface, the Institute cut itself off from the outside world, and began using teleportation permanently. At that point, it became a matter of teleporting since to the surface to gather material and technology desired by the Institute. By 2287, the Institute relies on Generation 3 cents to continue the ever-expanding construction of their underground complex. On the surface, however, it is usually the Generation 1 and 2 cents that we see occupying buildings throughout the Commonwealth. One such example is at ArcJet Systems. Perhaps the Institute would rather risk the lives of its older models when on expeditions and scavenging missions. Aside from fortifying its position underground, and achieving gigantic scientific leaps. We know that the Institute once attempted to help the Commonwealth establish some law and order. We discover this by listening to a holotape found in the Institute named Director's Recording Number 52, referencing an organization called the Commonwealth Provisional Government. The holotape reads as follows. Look, Director, I'm going to make the same recommendation I did last time. We did everything we could, four years dedicated to preserving this Commonwealth Provisional Government. You've seen the same reports I have. It's falling apart and fast. We need a plan for what happens when that fall is complete. I know some of the other divisions have suggested that we cut off all contact, hide underground and pretend nobody's home. That would, in my opinion, be a mistake. We can't just give up on these people, and with the Android program, we don't have to. We'll soon have the capabilities to deploy androids to the surface in great enough numbers to maintain order. Just, just think about it, all right? Keep it in mind moving forward. We know that soon after this, the CPG collapsed, and that is near the time the Institute severed any communication with people on the surface. Another holotape found in the Institute describes to us the rest of the story, how the fear and paranoia of synths in the Commonwealth was created and why the shadowy organization was forced to abandon the CPG and communication with the surface entirely. Director's recording number 108 reads as follows. Damn it, Galton. 
What the hell is going on down there? I have to convene an emergency directorate meeting because of this screw-up. That synth was a prototype. It was absolutely not ready for field testing. The mess it caused in Diamond City threatens decades of work to keep us out of the spotlight. I will be very clear. My legacy as director will not be tarnished by your division's mistakes. I am going to find out exactly who approved any sort of operation above ground, and that person will be held fully accountable. This holotape is referencing the broken mask incident in Diamond City, which is when Generation 3 synths were revealed to the Commonwealth at large. In another timeline, if the prototype synth had not been allowed to reach Diamond City, then the Commonwealth Provisional Government may have survived and created a functioning society with the Institute as its shepherd. Alas, that is not the legacy of the CPG or the Institute. Thank you for watching this video. Please like if you enjoyed it and feel free to leave your thoughts on how the Institute constructed its massive underground complex in the comments section below. Or if you don't care, then in the wise words of Todd Howard, it just works.